So let's go ahead and dive into the five things you need to know for February 17th, 2022. I'm going to talk about just a little bit about national headlines first. Um, we're in the midst of the Winter Olympics, as everyone's aware. Uh, it's been a, a great event and has always been um, an important showcase for winter sports. Um, this year it is no different. It, except for a couple things in particular. One is that uh, they are using 100% man-made snow. You can see the photo there, which is a backdrop to um, some of the, you know, big air competitions, um, ski jumping, et cetera, which was a little bit shocking. I think people that when they think of winter sports are um, thinking of picturesque, uh, picturesque mountain scenes, but instead um, many are seeing this, which has been interesting. And I, I was pretty surprised to see that. Um, but I know just as the last couple of nights, we're seeing, um, you know, downhill, um, slalom, et cetera, which is um, a nice change. Uh, but anyway, being that it's, we're using, they are using so much man-made snow that it's uh, calling into question the future of the Winter Olympic Games and climate change in general for um, snow sports, which is nothing new, but it's just at a, you know, a higher, it's a larger audience, you know, we're calling attention to this at the global level. Um, we hope that we see a surge and, you know, new people to our sports and our mountains because of the Olympics. Well, uh, that's yet to be seen and, you know, we're, we're still in the midst of it. Uh, but one thing China had as a goal was to increase their participation in winter sports um, in particular. And uh, there are articles out there that are talking about um, increase in um, equipment sales and participation in, in China in particular. So that's de definitely a positive. Um, other things in the national media that I'm sure you're all tracking is the uh, discussion around crowding um, and experience, customer experience as at different mountains. Vail Resorts in particular has uh, bared the brunt of that, but it's not just Vail Resorts. And so well, as we get through to the next part of the webinar, we'll dive into that a little bit more. Because um, it's, you know, even if you're not in an article like that, it's just the, the, the volume and the discussion has, has not been super positive for our, our industry. So, you know, something that we're keeping an eye on. And then um, in that vein, we're not alone when it comes to increased prices and increased attendance. Uh, Disney and their uh, amusement parks are coming under fire a bit for some of the same things that, you know, ski is. So it's interesting to track that. Um, and we'll dive into that a little bit more um, in the second half. Um, now on to local uh, headlines. So one thing that's good that's coming out of the Olympics is our local athletes. Right. So I know have, I live in Bale and we're seeing, you know, a lot of really great um, media and press around our local athletes. And I know a lot of um, you folks are seeing that as well. And that's that's great to see um, other things that we're tracking. Uh, Aspen Skiing Company surprises workers with the midseason pay hike, three dollars an hour increase. Uh, so a big move by them to the tune of 12, um, 12 million dollars. Analysts are predicting uh, Vail. Um, is going to uh, potentially follow suit on that. Um, we continue to track the real estate market. Uh, in particular, as you can see the headline there, their Vail Valley real estate market passes $4 billion in uh, 2021 with more than 40% of the buyers paid um, in cash, which is astounding. Um, and again, we'll, we'll talk about what, what, why we care about that. But, um, you know, other other good news would be, you know, that what Tom is going to really dive into is um, increased in bookings, reservations, revenue um, on the lodging side has been really positive as from um, a revenue perspective. Um, Indy Pass, they've uh, recruited their first Colorado resort, which is Sunlight Mountain. Uh, Big Sky has announced some um, really uh, significant mountain improvements, uh, which includes a new tram and gondola. And then um, I just included a, a local article from uh, the 
COO of Vail that is talking a bit about, you know, response to some of the criticism, which unfortunately is not making national news, it's staying more on the local level. Uh, but anyway, these are the things that, you know, we should, we think you should be paying attention to and we're tracking and, you know, happy to, to share this with you. So that's my number one. So we'll, we'll uh, pass it on to Tom for number two. Thanks, Katie. Uh, by the way, I, I think that Vail real estate number at $4 billion and 40% cash is astounding. Just astounding. And I'd be interested to know if there's a clear line on how many of those 40% uh, are institutional buyers, commercial versus private. Uh, but, but that's an astounding number. So um, welcome, everybody. And we'll move on to number two quickly. Um, and number two is uh, about econometrics and inflation. It's been a topic a lot. We want to talk a little bit about it because there are some good and bad things about inflation. So these are really just four points and whether or not they impact the industry negatively or positively. The first, of course, is that inflation decreases purchasing power. So the value of a dollar is literally less this year than last. That's inflation. Uh, so you spend more to get less or the same. Uh, that has a negative industry impact. Consumers have fewer discretionary dollars to spend on already hyperinflated travel. Um, so you know that can work against us. Um, but it encourages investment. And that's actually positive. So since the dollar is going down in value, um, institutional investors and personal investors who are savvy are locking in their current value by investing now. There's big ticket items, there's stocks, and, and those things all make sense. Um, it's got a positive industry impact. It can help drive earlier bookings as people try to get more value for their dollar now and lock in future travel dates. Um, it can also drive commercial development as, as institutional investors look to uh, get locked in on current rates for new property development. So it actually can be helpful to see in, in interest going up. And there are some governments that actually like higher inflation rates. Uh, but it can also actually cause more inflation. That desire to lock in dollars inserts money into the economy, which in turn devalues currency further, because if you've got more of something, it's worth less. And that creates sort of this feedback loop and that can actually create hyperinflation. That's really problematic if it happens. And that does have a negative industry impact. Hyperinflation, especially when it's isolated within a, an economic sector like travel, it's really not sustainable. And it can isolate markets and damage economies. I would actually argue from my point of view, and, and people might be tired of hearing me say that, that our current ADR gains are an example of hyperinflation within the travel industry. Um, and it drives up interest rates. Um, and, you know, to avoid hyperinflation, the central bank will hike rates uh, and that makes money more expensive and slows that feedback loop. And that works in everybody's favor and it has mixed impact. It can slow down real estate markets that are hyperactive. And that actually works because that helps to control prices. And that in turn helps make perhaps workforce housing or short term and long term rental housing of different sorts more available and might even discourage in migration of people from out of town so that the locals can kind of sustain their, their look and feel of their uh, local economy. And, and um, yeah, anyway, never mind. And then it can, can encourage investment as well. So uh, higher interest rates can actually go back to number two, which is encourages investment. So um, inflation isn't necessarily all bad, but it's pretty high right now. We'll talk in more detail on that uh, when we get into the further part of the webinar. Uh, number three on the things you need to know is how are things performing in general based on the Decimetrics data and all of the indicators are green. We're actually comparing versus three years now um, so that we're getting fully pre-pandemic. So if we take a look at occupancy, ADR and RevPAR versus last year, uh, the winter season, November 1 through April 30th on the books as of January 31st is up 49% in occupancy. 35% uh, in ADR and 101% in RevPAR versus last year. 627 in 34 versus two years ago at this same time. And what ultimately ended up being the all-time record season is actually three years ago, the 18-19 season, and up 631 and 38% uh, versus that time. So uh, very, very positive news for the most part. There are some trending changes that we'll, we'll talk about in more detail during the body of the webinar. Uh, and some trends. We should, on number four, when we take a, talk about our behavioral trends, we should take into account what's happening with booking patterns. And as we see COVID-19 cases decline, we can expect a return of short lead bookings, which really vanished versus the, uh, during the course of the last um, uh, three months. 
this chart that we're looking at here is showing you bookings in the blue bar uh, made in December for arrival during that month in the orange bar made in, uh, sorry, November for arrival in that month. The orange bar is made in December for arrival in December and in January, made in uh, January for arrival in January. So bookings in month for month have been down. They have gotten uh, further down over the course of the Omicron surge. Uh, bookings for arrival in the next month have also been down. They were better in December. Bookings for January were a little bit better uh, than the other uh, two months, November and January. Uh, and for arrival two months out are actually a little bit stronger. So what we expect to see happen as Omicron subsides and we get towards some version of uh, endemic phase, and we'll talk about that in a second, we ought to be seeing a return of these shorter than 45 day bookings that helps to fill in those blank spots uh, that you're seeing in your occupancy and so forth and, and the ability to drive in month for month, which actually often has higher rates and, and so forth. Uh, the trend of short lead bookings vanishing during surges has been well defined now over the course of the past two years as we've been watching uh, COVID surges and declines and booking surges and declines. So we know that this increase is going to happen. That'll, that'll help. And then number five is our wild card. And it really is a question of whether or not there is, in fact, a transition out of COVID-19. Um, and a pandemic and towards an endemic. There are different arguments about that between the WHO and the CDC and other health authorities around the world about when and if it's going to happen. However, current projections on the top here in cases show assuming that there are no further surges anticipated of variants, at least in the immediate future, a sharp decline in cases uh, from today and going into April until it pretty much gets down towards a flat line number. This is the United States data that we're looking at. Hospitalizations are declining sharply as our ICU occupancies, and so we're going to expect to see those things continue to go downward as well. And what that translates to that we care about is an increase in mobility, and mobility is the ability to get out, to go into restaurants, to have higher capacity at venues, and so forth, and it is anticipated that mobility is going to end up pretty much typical uh, right around June or so if these trends continue. Uh, of course, the wild card part of this is we don't know what's going to continue. There are variants of Omicron that are spreading out there that are as yet unquantified. So interesting things going on. It's an interesting top five things that you need to know. Uh, we think those are the five things that you need to know for February 17th at least. And uh, we'll be back next month with more on that.